What's up, guys? <clears throat> What's up, guys? Chris here from Mainly Mesh. Going to give you the pattern that I strung up in the String King Mark 2D, as well as just touch on a little bit of the theory behind it today. Just like when I string any other stick, I always want to get as much hold as possible in a defensive head, especially because having a turnover as a defenseman is even more dangerous. You're on your own, own end of the field. If I can get the most hold possible in a defensive stick, I'm happy. But I also want to make sure that I'm not over channeling the stick so that I make ground balls more difficult. What I mean by that, and if I grab another example of an offensive head here, when I string my offensive heads, I don't care quite as much about the tension at the top because I know that I'm gonna get my stick low. I have two hands on my stick, it's a shorter stick. I can make sure I'm, I'm low to the ground and scooping all the way through the ball. As you can see, with a very channeled stick here, and this is a Maverick Optic U with my kind of classic pocket in it, you can see there's kind of this large flat section along the top here, um, especially, and in, in it's tight in the corners as well, and that's due to the channeling along the stick. But, like I said, it's something you're scooping through really quickly. You've got a low angle to the ground because you have a short stick. So it's not something I worry about too much in my short stick patterns. For a long pole though, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to scoop up the ground balls, right? They're going to have a tough enough time defending their stick from, from short sticks hacking away at them. So we want to make sure they can at least get the ball in the pocket and then our job as stringers is done. So what I do here is naturally I try to put a slightly higher pocket, but what is more important than the pocket placement is how flat the top is. So as you can see here, I wanna to try to make a clean transition from the base of the pocket all the way up to the scoop. So I don't want any flat sections here, and I usually still cheat and create kind of some flatter sections on the side to create a good amount of channel for that hold, but as much as possible, I want to make a really seamless transi transition from the point of the scoop into the pocket. As you can see, that's gonna allow me to scoop through the ball and get the ball right in the depth of my pocket for, for maximum transition to offense. That didn't make sense, but whatever. There's a really easy way for you guys to kind of simplify all that theory and make sure you achieve this effect as often as possible, and it's really what I call the rule of four. For a defensive head, I will never pull down more than four diamonds tightly. I know I have in the past, but that's another story. But really, when I'm trying to go for ground balls, I will never pour, pull down more than four diamonds because when you pull down that fifth diamond, that is what is going to create a tighter space up top due to where that fifth diamond translates into its channel line. What I mean by channel line is that if I trace this fourth knot, these mesh bridges that connect from that fourth knot trace all the way up right to the point of that scoop, right? So I have this nice long V and I'm gonna go into much more detail about this in a different video, but I have that nice long kind of U shape created by that fourth diamond. But if I were to pull down a fifth diamond, that fifth diamond connects underneath the scoop. So I would have two flat of a channel up top in order to have the best ground balls possible. With that in mind, let me break down the pattern real quick. I did a nine diamond top string. Blah, 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 blah. I did a nine diamond top string in this head. I tied that top string to the first sidewall hole. Uh, it's nice and wide up top, so if you're not doing a ten diamond, I would not try pulling down that top string any further. I tied the first ten diamond row to the second sidewall, and then I skipped, 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 anchor knot, skip, skip, skip anchor knot, skip, 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 anchor knot, one, one skip, one skip, one skip, two, uh, one skipping two holes, one skipping two holes, one skip to tie off, okay? So basically you have four pull downs and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones. So that's using 11 di diamonds in total. Usually I'll use 11 di diamonds in total if I'm trying to get the baggiest defensive pocket possible. If you want something a little bit more focused and pointed, I would just stick with a, a 10 diamond pattern. So maybe spread out some of these ones a little bit more. If you want an even higher pocket than this, I wouldn't do all these, you know, skipping three holes up top. Maybe I'd only skip one or two. 
But basically, this pattern is going to be a big old boat of a pocket for a defensive player. Uh, should have a ton of hold. Uh, be pretty easy on the ground balls. But that's what I'm working with right now. I'll probably put one nylon on the first available row and then skip, do another straight, skip, do another straight, um, which isn't usually what I do in my short stick sticks, short stick sticks, but that's probably what I'm going to do for the shooter sh set up on this head. That's about it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions about this pattern. Uh, like I said, eventually I'm going to get around to kind of doing a whole uh, video describing in more detail my whole theory of channel channel lines, but not today. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Mainly Mesh. Follow me on Twitter at Mainly Mesh. Like, comment, subscribe, the usual. Thanks so much. I will catch you guys next time.